नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सेशन वी आर अबाउट टू एम्बार्क अपॉन पतंजलीज पॉस्टुलेशन ऑन कॉस्पोलॉजी आउट द आउटसेट लेट मी रिल यू दैट पतंजलि हैज टेकन एब्सोल्युटली यूनिक स्टैंड इन पॉस्टुलेटिंग कॉस्पोलॉजी so usually it is explained how the creation takes place right from modern science to various isms where cosmology is mentioned how the creation has taken place is what is the convention of describing cosmology but patanjali has a unique approach here all that we look around the question is not from where has it come so the cosmology is described by taking recourse to a process where this will all go so from factual reality we are told how the things are going to go back and once that is postulated we will know how the things come forth so if i have to tell you about the cosmological concept of patanjali i will say that first it was alinga then came linga matra then came avishesha and then came vishesha and this is how usually is the process this in our philosophical system is called srushti krama sarga krama from where the creation comes and all the philosophies even indian philosophies have taken recourse to this process what was in the beginning like upanishad tell us sadeva saumyedagma agra asit asadva idam agra asit atma va idam agra asit so what was in the beginning is the way to descri- describe the cosmology what was in the beginning and then what happened and what went on happening and happening and happening and happening and ultimately it has come to present state so this is how the cosmology is postulated so this is called sarga krama so the cause and effect relationships mentioned the first cause then what happens to it then what happens to it and then what happens to it and then what goes on happening and what goes on happening and what goes on happening and then how it has come to present state of universe so this is how the cosmology is mentioned whether it is oriental process or occidental process but patanjali takes the opposite course and he describes the laya krama the laya krama that means the process of dissolution because what is around is quite uh, visible to us and that is a factual reality that we are citing so he takes the reverse order what is today from where this came and that came from where and then that of the that and that of the that of the that and that of the that of the that of the that of the that came so 
the point i want to stress is that patanjali has taken recourse to laya krama while in cosmology the convention is to take recourse to sarga krama srushti krama how the creation has taken place and therefore the 2.19 sutra that we are kabensing tell us tells us vishesha avishesha linga matra alingani guna parvani see after all the creation is all dance of gunas trigunas satrajat amgunas from causal aspect to effectual aspect it is all gunas and gunas and gunas and gunas the visible is of the nature of gunas the cause of this visible is of the nature of gunas the cause of that cause is of the nature of gunas the cause of that cause and cause of that cause etc is all gunas that is called gunatmakata or guna parva so the prakriti evolves in guna parvas and it has come to where it is today but then we are told in sankhya ontology that the gunas are destructible in the sense the gunas guna manifestations are all destructible what is today is going to extinguish tomorrow what is visible what is tangible is going to go towards latency like it is said that life is going and proceeding towards the death and after death again there will be rebirth again one will get life and the life will proceed towards death and that le- death will lead to next life and again the life will proceed towards the death so as bhagavad gita says whatever comes into existence is going to go into extinction and therefore the sankhyas have embraced satkarya vad which is the truest of all realities that what exists really will never cease to exist what comes and goes will keep on coming and going and coming and going and coming and going there is always that cyclic movement it's a cycle from the from the cause comes the effect and the effect goes back to cause and again it will come back as effect so this cause and effect is something very very cyclic and that's why we have a cyclic theory of creation and not a linear theory of creation so according to patanjali from what is called as alinga guna parva what will ensue will linga matra and from linga matra the avishesha and from the avishesha the vishesha but the sutra has not come in that order it doesn't say alinga linga parva vi, 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 uh, vishesha uh, avishesha and vishesha are the guna parvas but it takes it goes to reverse order vishesha vishesha linga matra alingani guna parvani so all that is around us is said to be vishesha parva the vishesha parva will go into avishesha which is its causal aspect 
avishesha will go into linga matra which is its causal aspect and linga matra will go back to alinga which is its causal aspect so we are all looking around that this is life these are the things of the life this is what is surrounding us so this will go back to its cause the cause will go back to its cause that cause will go back to its cause and ultimately it will go back to pri- primordial cause the first cause so it is a cycle between the primordial cause to a chain of causes and effects so this is the unique approach that patanjali has taken up that is why in 219 he says vishesha avishesha linga matri alangani guna parvani i recall that wonderful incidents in upanishads episode in upanishads the disciple questions and the acharya acharya from where all this is coming so pointing at a huge banyan tree he says how come this huge banyan tree is here how did it come here so acharya tells the disciple go and pluck a fruit from the tree so he walks up to the tree climbs up to the uh, to the tree plucks a fruit and comes down and gives the fruit to his master shows the fruit to the master master says cut the fruit and he cuts the fruit what do you find inside the fruit he says there is seed in the fruit so he says okay take out the seed and he says smash the seed break the seed what do you get he says there are tiny particles in the seed so he says take one of the particles and try to tear it apart break it apart what do you find so he says nothing so when he says there is nothing then he says from this the tree has come so he says is it nothing from which the tree has come the acharya says from nothing only nothing will come from nothing something cannot come so your deduction is wrong ultimately what you found in the, the seed uh, uh, particle is not nothing but it is nothingness and from nothingness something came up and from something coming up gradually you got this huge banyan entry so from nothingness all this comes up not nothing so it should not be called nothing it should be nothingness as if nothing from as if nothing something has come up because from nothing you will get only nothing from something you will get something but if there is nothing you can't get from nothing a banana from nothing a mango from nothing an apple there will be something that something will either give you banana or apple or mango or a flower a rose or hibiscus jasmine so all this comes from something nothing comes from nothing that is the satkaryavada 
So the disciple, disciple is taken to the tiniest visible particle in the eyes, to the eyes, and then that too is made to break, and then having broken, naturally the disciple says there is nothing in it. So Acharya corrects him that it is not nothing, it is nothingness. So, this is how we need to have inquiry about, like we have a scientific mind, the scientific mind will always try to go towards causation. What is the cause of this? And what is the cause of that? What is the cause of that's that? That's how the scientific mind has inquiry, inquisitiveness. So in philosophy, we need to have this inquiry. Like during the study of Swadhyaya, we were told, from where have we come? So, the philosophy will take us towards the primeval cause, cause and primordial cause. So that's how the cosmology is getting unfolded in Patanjali's system. So the guna, guna parvas, the sattva rajatama gunas are said to be going through four phases. The original and first and primordial phase is called Alingam. Alingam means markless, no attribute, no characteristic. So it will be described later when we take up and decipher the Sutra. Like the disciple in the Upanishad said, or was given the realization from nothingness came something. What is that nothingness? That means you can't attribute something, you cannot, cannot characterize it. And that's why you, he, the disciple ended up saying nothing. And Acharya corrected him that it is not nothing, it is nothingness. That means there is no mark. There is no attribute, there is no characteristic. The, the, uh, from where the things come up. So that is called Alinga Parva, markless. There is no mark. Then comes a phase which is Linga Matra, means mark only. Nothing more than that. Just the mark. Like in botanical seeds, we know that this is a. When we are given seeds, botanical seed, then we say, yes, this is going to be sprouting some kind of plant. I do not know what kind of plant, but it, it is going to sprout a plant. So, a, a, a plant is going to come out of the seed is what we can realize and understand. So there is only mark only, the seed will not tell you that this is a mango plant or this is a rose plant, or this is apple plant or this is hibiscus plant. So there is only mark that some kind of botanical creation is going to come out of the seed. So there is something called mark only, lingamatram. And then comes avishesha, undifferentiated. And then we get differentiated manifest universe around us. Again, about the uh, Linga Matra and Avishesha. Again, there is a wonderful example which comes in uh, traditional process. See, if there is a mango seed, you know, when it is planted, it is going to give you ma mango plant. There will be sprout, there will be sapling, there will be pr uh, plant, there will be a tree and the tree will bear out mangoes. So the seed which is to be planted as a mango seed, you get it from a botanical 
merchant. Uh, and then you know that if I plant this, it is going to give me this kind of plant. And I will be able to get this kind of fruit. And therefore you get mango seeds and plant man mango seeds. If you are desirous of having a mango tree in your backyard and grow mangoes and eat mangoes. If you want apple, you will go and fetch the seeds of apple or sapota or any such fruit. But the seed doesn't show you the fruit. The seed will sprout a plant and the plant will fetch you fruit. Now, in the seed condition, in the seed condition, there are tiny particles inside that seed. Perhaps there is a shell-like thing and there is inside of it uh, what, what we call as there is nothing in it that is there. But in the seed of that botanical life plant, the seed will contain root part of the tree, trunk part of the tree, the branches of the tree, the barks of the tree, the leaves of the tree, the flower of the tree, and the fruit of the tree. All that will be existing in the seed. Because seed is going to give rise to all the parts of the tree, right from root to shoot. And from root to trunk to branches to barks to leaves to flowers to fruits. Everything is going to come out from that seed. So that means they are potentially there in the seed. You can't say that this part of the seed is going to give root and that part of the seed is going to shoot, give you shoot. Or this part of the tree is uh, seed is going to use the, give the root part and that this part for the trunk part and this part of the branches and that part for the barks and that part of the leaves and that part for the fruit flower etc. No. They are all there in the seed but in undifferentiated condition. All the parts and aspects of the tree will be in the seed potentially. There are no divisions and allocations saying that this part of the tree will have this and that part of the tree, uh, seed will have that. It doesn't say that this part of the seed will be having this part, aspect of the tree and that part of the seed will be having that aspect of the tree. No, it is not that. They all are potentially existing in the seed form, but in undifferentiated condition. The differentiation will only appear after it is planted, it is nurtured, and then you get a sapling, you get a uh, sprout and sapling, and then you get a plant out of it, then you get a tree out of it, and all parts of the tree will manifest at some point in time. So something will have, uh, will have become, come from seed, which is called roots of the tree. Something from the seed will have come up from, which would be called the trunk of the tree, and then branches of the tree, and barks of the tree, and leaves of the tree, and flower and fruits of the tree. But in, in seed form, they all exist, potentially. And that's why they will be undifferentiated condition. They will be in undifferentiated conditions, inseparable condition, undifferentiated condition in that tiny seed or perhaps a tiny seed particle inside it. That is called avishesha. Indeterminate. The various parts of the tree are indeterminately there in the seed of the tree and perhaps the particle of the, in the seed. Every particle of the seed will contain all aspects of the tree. But how? In undifferentiated state and in indistinguishable state. You will not be able to distinguish that this is the root part and this is the trunk part and that is the branch part and that's the bark part and that's the leaf part 
and then that's the fruit part. No, you can't do that. So they will all be there, existing undifferentially, in undifferentiated conditions. That is called avishesha. And then from avishesha, you start getting all particularities. Something is root of the tree, something is the trunk of the tree, something is the branches of the tree, something barks of the tree, something as leaves and flowers and fruits. So they become distinguishable. So all that is then specialized. That This is the root part, this is the trunk part, this is the branch part, this is the bark part, this is the leaf part and this is the flower part and this is the fruit part. So they all will become distinguishable. They will all have their characteristics coming up from the tiny seed particle. That is called vishesha, the specialized. So something will get specialized as, as root of the tree, something uh, specialized as a trunk of the tree, then such something specialized as the branches and barks and leaves and fruits of the tree. That is called vishesha parva. So, this is how Patanjali is mentioning and in Laya Krama we will first see the manifest. So we see the tree and then we come to know the seed has come from a, from a plant, from a seed. And of course we know cyclically that seed again comes from tree. The seed you again get the fruit and the fruit will contain seed and seed, seed will generate a plant and tree. So that's the cycle, small cycle. So the point is the sutra is mentioning laya krama. Because Patanjali is saying that Avish, Vishesha came from Avishesha, Avishesha came from Lingamatra, Lingamatra came from Alingam. This is the cosmology. This is the, and the cosmological unfoldment is from Alinga came the Lingamatra, from Lingamatra came Avishesha, from Avishesha came Vishesha. Let me tell you at this point in time that about modern concept of cosmology, we are familiar with that very popular idea about cosmology that there was a big bang some 13 uh, thousand billion years ago, that there was a big bang. From big bang came space. From space came something that is called nebula. Neb nebula means that which gives birth to several stars. It's a cloud. Nebula is a kind of cloud. That's why it is referred to as nebulous cloud. And from nebulous cloud, many stars take birth. And from many, when the stars are taking birth, then we know that starry systems are taking birth. Like our star the sun. When the sun came into existence, along with the sun came the planets, the entire solar system, which the whole solar system accounts for only zero point 0.02% of solar matter and the solar, the sun contains the 98.98% .98 of solar matter. That much is in the sun itself and only barely 0.002% we are getting from Mercury to Pluto the matter, the planets. 
So, that's how the modern cosmology so far we have. We do not know what is going to be described prospectively later, maybe 100, 200, 300 years after or a thousand, two thousand years after. But as per today, there was a big bang, from big bang came a space, from space came nebulae, and from nebulae came the stars, and from stars came the planetary systems and planets and satellites. But Patanjali, as a metaphysicist, has a subtler way of postulating. He says from Alinga came Linga Matra, from Linga Matra came Avishesha, and from Avishesha came Vishesha. So in the cosmology of Patanjala, there is a mention of uh, atoms and molecules Subatomic particles to atoms, and then from atoms the matter comes up. So they have gone, the Patanjalas and the Oriental philosophers have gone beyond the subatomic particles. They also venture to say, if I may say so, from where do you get subatomic particles? So that becomes primordial matter for modern uh, physicist. But metaphysicists go beyond that. And they go beyond the subatomic particles. So there are concepts of Anu, uh, Renu, Trasarenu, Paramanu. So these are all postulations that you get in metaphysicist uh, postulations such as Sankhya system, Nyaya Vaisheshika system, Vedanta system. And now we understand even in the light of modern science that something on the plane of particles becomes quite primor primordial, primeval. What today they call as uh, subatomic particles in uh, nuclear physics or particle physics. So there must be first particles, which is also endorsed by modern sciences. The, prim the particles are more primordial than the matter that we look around in the universe. So while this metaphysicists in Indian orthodox philosophical systems had the concept of Anu, Renu, Trasarenu, Paramanu, etc. So the particle physics can be found in Patanjali system also. And prior to Paramanus, the mention will be metaphysics. Even today, if the physics goes beyond particle physics realm, it will be metaphysics today. It will be beyond the physics today to say something prior to subatomic particles or prior to particle physics plane. That is there in the wisdom of the lore of the Indian philosophers. So, the Sankhyas and Patanjalas and the Oriental philosophers say that it is all Guna Parva, Sattva Raja Tama. Sattva Raja Tama, if to be described in the terms of physics, it is energy. Basically, the gunas are energy. That's why right in the beginning, few sessions ago, I told you 
the prakruti is not matter the prakruti is energy sattva rajatam gunas are energy forms like sattva guna is said to be potential energy raja guna is said to be kinetic energy and tamo guna can be described as static energy so these are energy forms sattva rajatam gunas are energy form daivi hi esh gunamayi mama maya durantyad the gunas are daivi daivi devi devi shakti shakti energy so adi adi shakti or adi maya is also referred to as mula prakruti in the theology and that is energy so sattva rajatam gunas are energy forms are not matters matters come later like matter comes from energy energy and matter is not a duality because as we are aware that energy can okay, get transformed into matter and matter can be getting transformed into energy and the energy has been defined in our times up to our times by our times as e is equal to mc square e means energy in the formula the m means mass of matter and c means velocity of light and the square of velocity of light so the matter would be transformed into energy if the matter picks up the velocity which is twice the velocity of light so that means they are mutually transformable so matter is coming out of energy matter is not as opposed to energy the matter is coming out of energy and the mat- matter can go back to energy with the equation that we know today is that einstein gave us e is equal to mc square so prakruti is not matter prakruti gives birth to matter matter comes from prakruti prakruti is energy it that's a prakruti literally means creative power creative power power means energy prakruti should be literally taken as creative power of the universe because the creativity and creation is out of prakruti and the prakruti has power to create and when it is the power to create that means it is energy it is energy form so sattva guna is potential energy rajo guna is kinetic energy and tamo guna is static energy if it is to be interpreted in the form of energy that modern science knows about so this prakruti will turn out matter so alinga will be energy form linga matra will be energy form avishesha will be energy form vishesha will be energy form and from vishesha you will get the matter again let me tell you vishesha is not that all is visible to you the visible universe is called quintuplicated universe dharma parinam lakshana parinam avastha parinam in vishesha will give you the manifest the manifest is said to be panchikruta srushti quintuplicated so the vishesha parva is not something that is visible to you tangible to you but it is graspable so we know the elements of the creation if you have anything in front of you you can go to the elements which constitute the matter in your hand 
so the elements are constituting the matter in your hand which can be seen which can be sighted which can be touched which can be felt which can be cognized which can be perceived there is always subtler things beyond the visible perceptible part of creation so vishesha the specialized means panchamahabhutas and ekadash indriyas in the bhautika srushti it will be panchamahabhutas in aindrik srushti it will be ekadash indriyas so there is a bearing to the previous sutra where it we were told about bhutendriyatmakam bhutendriyatmakata means bhut bhuta means panchamahabhutas indriya means ekadash indriyas that is vishesha parva panchamahabhutas are not invisible are not visible that's why they are called bhutas therefore they are called great bhutas great ghosts the ghost is something that you cannot be seeing we can only uh register the effects of a ghost and that's why we refer to something as a ghost because we can't see it it's an invisible force and then it plays a havoc and then we say this is because of a a spirit or vampire or a ghost like we say this is elephant and this is a dog and this is a human being there is nothing like this is a ghost the ghost is not a visible organism there is invisible organism we cannot sight it and that's why we call it ghost and that's why the metaphysicists call it is called this as bhuta mahabhuta great ghosts because they are invisible prithvi ap tej vayu akash as mahabhutas are invisible it is not refer to visible prithvi that is under your feet and it is not referring to visible space that is over your heads it is not referring to water body as up it is not referring to flame as fire it is not that which is flowing and makes you feel the air flowing the breeze blowing etc these are it cannot be even felt that's why they are called mahabhuta so the mahabhuta is vishesha parva again don't mistake it is not visible the visible is out of panchamahabhutas mountains and rivers and fires and boulders and stones and whatever that is called quintuplicated matter that is called panchi karanam the panchi karanam gives us visible world so all this is that is visible to us oceans and rivers and lakes the earth under our feet the ground under our feet the boulders and stones and mountains the land mass that is quintuplicated prithvi the ocean is quintuplicated water the flame is quintuplicated fire and the breeze that flows is quintuplicated vayu so there is something called quintuplicated mahabhutas called panchikrut mahabhutas panchikaranam that is visible now that is made up of invisible which is vishesha the vishesha comes from further invisible the ungraspable unintelligible which is avishesha and further until unintelligible you get the linga matra and then further and further and further unintelligible you get the alinga parva so vishesha should not be mistaken to visible things around you but the constituents of visible is vishesha parva constituents of visible is vishesha not constitution of visible constituents of visible is vishesha parva behind that is avishesha behind that is linga matra behind that is alinga parva so
So, Patanjali is going to speak about the Bhutendriyatmaka Srushti as to how it has come up. So it has come up from uh, Vishesha. Vishesha came from Avishesha. Avishesha came from Linga Matra. Linga Matra came from Alinga. And Alinga is causeless. That's the first cause. Primeval cause. Primordial cause. It comes from nothing. It is ever existent. Like seed comes from fruit. It is Alinga Parva is not coming from anything. That is why it is called Mula Prakriti. Mula root Prakriti. It's a root Prakriti. It doesn't come from anything and from anywhere. It is causeless. It is eternally there. It is always there. It is always existent. So that is another Sat. Just as our Atma is Sat Chidananda, the Prakriti too is Sat. Mula Prakriti is Sat. Not the rest of the Prakriti is Sat because it will come and go. It will appear and disappear. But the Mula Prakriti is something that will never disappear nor will ever appear. It is always there. It is always there. So, little enunciation to 2.19. With that, we will end this session and we will proceed to this fascinating topic in our next session. So, namaskar all of you.